Hi everyone and welcome to the VOOCcast, Australia's Nintendo podcast. My name's Angelo Valdivia and with me this week we're rolling a four-player episode beginning with Oliver Brandt. G'day folks. Luke Henderson. Howdy howdy. And Paul Roberts. Hey everyone. We've got a great show lined up for you this week, all about a surprise Breath of the Wild announcement that wasn't quite what we were expecting, as well as a look at what Nintendo is going for the rest of 2020 and whether it has a spot in the fist fight between Microsoft and Sony. But to kick things off, let's dig into Nintendo's worst kept Mario 35th anniversary secrets and what announcements it did manage to keep as a surprise. So back on Thursday, September 3, um, there was a bit of a surprise announcement, uh, annou- sorry, anniversary, start that again. There was a bit of a surprise Super Mario 35th Anniversary Direct that was dropped, which featured uh, a, f- a few games that, you know, we were already aware of uh, coming out of a whole bunch of leaks that ca- that came back in March, April-ish, um, that we also covered on the, on the bookcast here. Um, but there were also some su- some surprises that we weren't at all expecting as well, which were quite exciting. But we'll sort of run through them in order a little bit, and we'll, we'll stop to, to talk about each one as we go. So let's start with the first one, Super Mario Bros. 35. This was a really interesting one. So this is kind of like Tetris 99, right, where it's playing... Is it the whole of Super Mario, um, the original Super Mario? Was it just the first few stages or whatever against 35 other people live? Uh, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think it's select stages. So it's not like the entirety of the game, but like they've they've sort of curated a bunch of stages to um, to, to pick out of that to, to run against. But like I, this is a, a, a fantastic little thing. Like I was so pleased to see this because like Tetris 99 obviously was like such an interesting new take on Tetris. Um, and you know super mario brothers 35 is is the same thing but for super mario like um the idea that like you defeat an enemy and it shows up on like other people's screens like that could really do some like some insane damage to people um so i'm all on board for this one especially if you're one of those people that has you know memorized the enemy placement of the original mario game down to like the pixel um but yeah, I, I, I think it's cool because it is actually the same developers as Tetris 99. So uh, uh, Akira Akira uh, Studios, they're the folks that have done this one as well as Tetris. So I'm, I'm keen for it. It's probably going to be one of those games I'll play once a fortnight. But um, I think the idea alone is fantastic because now we could have a Super Mario World version or Mario 3 version if we wanted. Well, that's no what I was going to ask about because Tetris 99 has sort of uh, lengthened its lifetime a little more by including like sort of seasonal updates or events and things like that. Like they had the Animal Crossing one recently. They also had Fire Emblem, I think, and a few other things um, where you just get, you know, just sounds, music and backgrounds of these different games and things. But if they incorporate, you know, the new Super Mario Brothers art style or something and pot- potentially new enemies and things, this could change things up even more. What about you, Paul? How do you feel about this one? Yeah, it's definitely interesting. It's uh... Yeah, uh, because of the limited time, I'm curious to see how much they sort of change it up up until March or whether there's something else coming in place to, like, yeah, to uh, an update or something on it. But it's definitely interesting, especially with how fun Tetris 99 is. It'll be interesting to see if this translates into as... Fun as that? It looks like it will, though. Yeah, that's a good point, right? It's available from October 1st and then only until March 31 next year, as far as we know, which is kind of bananas. Like Tetris 99 is going on permanently as far as we know, but this isn't. Tetris 99 was also going to be a, a limited time thing as well. Oh, was it? But okay. it, it got such a good reaction, they just kept it going. The other thing I'll note too is that the, the, the hard cut off is 31st of March. It's not that you can't get it after then. It won't be playable after then. It's like like the servers are going offline pretty much like it's, it'll be a done thing at this point it's so Which strange and that's that's bizarre. only one game out of this entire set of announcements that's also that's available for a limited time there are there's another one as well which we'll come to soon but yeah it's very very odd that they would create this multiplayer game which looks like it's been built from the ground up as well like unless they're incorporating some code some netcode or something from tetris like this is an entirely new effort from this studio and it's only going to be live for six months well, maybe is, maybe next year we'll get Super Mario Thirty Six. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a little bit strange. Like I understand, like it's supposed to be an anniversary game, um, so you know it would make sense that it would go up until, you know, obviously this uh, sort of March um, cutoff is is 
because, you know, we'll have March 10, which is Mario Day. Um, but, like, yeah, it just, it seems strange not to do it. Like, I maybe they're concerned about, like, the, the player base dropping off. Um, I don't know, because, like, again, like, Tetris 99 is, is still running. Um, it still has a pretty active player base, and I can't imagine um, this new game would be any different from that. And, and Tetris, every time they do one of those Grand Prix or uh, what do they call them in the US, Maximus Cups, every time they have one of those, the player base explodes. Like during the weeks, you can occasionally get a full game of 99 players. But during these Cups, during these Grand Prix, every weekend, every match is full of actual people playing it because they want these things. So there's definitely people around for this sort of stuff, which makes this six-month run a bit even weirder. Hmm. All right, let's go into our next announcement. So this one kind of makes me a little mad, and we'll we'll talk about that a little more uh, in in our future topic later in the episode. But Game and Watch Super Mario Bros, uh, which is coming on November thirteenth, which is basically a whole new Game and Watch handheld unit with the original Super Mario Brothers on it, with a fancy new um, uh, LCD color LCD screen and everything. Looks really schmick, uh, and this one's coming out for seventy nine ninety five Australian. Um, I'm personally not going to get this one, and there are reasons for that, which I'll bring up later on. But what about you guys? I, I know that Ollie has pre-ordered this one. What about you, Luke and Paul? Have you guys gotten pre-orders now for this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> shameless consumer. It's Yeah. <laughs> maybe Fair maybe enough. we should now need to convince Angelo. Uh, this is, no this is one of those, I'm afraid. This is one of those cool things. Is like, it's, it's a really nice little thing that they're doing, but at the same time, it's like a question why this exists. It's, it, don't get me wrong, it looks cool and it'll be fun to play it, but $80 for the original Mario game and then the lost levels, you know, thrown in. I don't know. That's, it's a hard sell and it's just because I'm a consumer, you know, I can't help myself that I'm And it has it. a clock on it. Let's not forget that. It does have a clock, but the clock <laughs> is only available while it's charging. So... What? You have to have a plug. Yeah, okay. So, so this oh is something that was like only on like the, the Nintendo website. It's like basically it goes into clock mode when it's charging. So you plug in like the USB C on the side, and then it can be like a little clock on your desk as long as it's plugged in. But like other than oh that, it has gosh. no clock functionality. Which is like it's super weird, but like I I mean, I don't know. I spent eighty dollars on it like the second I could spend eighty dollars on it. <laughs> um I actually spent $160 on it because I secured a pre order for a friend of mine. Um, but um, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's it's See, it's a really weird choice, um, you know. And like, it's, it, it's worth saying, like, it is a collector's item, so like, you know, eighty bucks, sure. But you know, how much? You know, how much can yeah. you put a price on on a collectible like that? Um, and yeah, and I totally see that as well. The other thing that I think is is interesting is that they're selling this, you know, direct to to the public, which is fine. But I, I would have thought something like this would have been one of those. Hey, you want this? You have to be a Nintendo Switch Online member. To, to get it, it's, you know, a special item only for, for those members, like the controllers they, they have as well. Um, but I'm also concerned about the size of that screen. Like the Game & Watch is notoriously a small product and having like this micro screen to play the original Mario Brothers on, I question if that's going to be worth playing it on. I was going to say, yeah, it's about, like, it looks about the same size as the Game Boy Micro roughly, right? Just not as thick. It's a, it's a 2.36 inch screen, so. <laughs> right, okay. I think that is like roughly the same size as they are. A Game Boy Micro screen, so like it's it's not a big thing, um, but again, we're all shameless consumers here, except for you, Angelo. So, uh, <laughs> what's, it, what's the? I oh, go on. Oh, it's quite strange that Nintendo haven't also mentioned that this watch doubles as a countdown timer, and when it hits March thirty first to twenty twenty one, it's just going to explode on your table. <laughs> <laughs> you you say that one. you say that as a joke, but it probably will. It probably will have some sort of. It'll say thank you for playing, and uh, th then promptly stop working. I think it'll only do that if it's powered by a PSP battery. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> Your game and watch is in another castle, and that's it. <laughs> Very good. Um, let's go to our next announcement. So this one's kind of cool. This is a really cool idea, but again, I'm not sure about the longevity of it. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. So this one's basically Mario Kart augmented reality, where you buy uh, one or two different kind of cart characters you set up some um 
uh, Mario Kart kind of checkpoint goalpost type things that you have to drive around and you can formulate a track like in your living room or something and then you play the game through your Switch and you see everything from the from the viewpoint of your kart race because it has a little camera on it. This is a really cool idea and if you know I was eight or nine years old I would absolutely be wanting something like this but I don't know like seems like a very difficult way to play Mario Kart considering you have to stare at your screen to play the game you can't really stare at the kart itself but what do you guys think about this one? Well, I mean, you can stare at the cart, but you don't get any of the Mario Kart stuff. You don't get any of the um, the Koopaling racing or the sure. the items and all that sort of stuff. But and you do play I, against computer characters in the game, right? Yeah, so it's it's a single player experience unless you buy the second cart. So if you buy the Mario one, you have to get the Luigi one to have two players. So it's an expensive way to play Mario Kart. Mm. Um, and I, I think it's cool, but as you said, if you know, if I was many years younger, I might be more excited for it because it is it's an expensive buy in and it's. I don't know. It's it seems very limited in its its overall appeal. Yeah, this is definitely one of those um, products that like reminds you that Nintendo did used to be a toy company, um, and that and the, this is a product that like really sort of emboldens that that aspect of Nintendo. Like I I really don't have that much interest in it. I think like the tech behind it is just absolutely fascinating, and like it's a really cool idea. But like you know I. I don't have the space for that kind of thing to begin with. And like, well, even if I did, like I've got a cat and a dog that would just absolutely tear it to shreds if they got the chance. So it's interesting <laughs> that you say used to be a toy company because some of the biggest announcements that come out of Nintendo this year have been toys. We've got that's, this, we've that's got, true, yeah. we've got the Lego stuff, not made by them, obviously, but, um, and, and the, the game and watch, of course, and plus a whole bunch of other stuff, which have just been toys really, but those are the biggest releases that they've got coming this year. So it's it's interesting that they've really lent into this hardware kind of stuff, but not a Nintendo 64 mini. But yeah. <laughs> what about you, Paul? How do you, how are you, are you going to get this yourself? Uh, it's, I was really tempted. It's, <laughs> uh, I guess, getting the Game & Watch and preparing for all the other Mario stuff did sort of make that a bit more of a harder sell, but... As with Ollie, the the size for it, and it's I can imagine it's going to be an issue for other people too. That it's you you need to have a house that that's it's that clear that there, there's enough room to set up a track that's not just a really small sad like oval in the middle of the lounge room, or I guess risk setting it up outside. Well, mm. that's the other thing too. Is this is called the home edition? I'm waiting for the street edition. So I can I can you know do a quarter mile drag down down the main street of my town or something. Well, that's yeah, yeah. Tokyo, right? But they got sued into oblivion. Well, yeah, that, that's a little <laughs> different that one. But the the thing that I like about this is the the, the developers being Valon Studios. This is their first game, and you might go, well, you know, how does how does a studio with you know their first product get Nintendo on board? And it's obviously because um, the guys that founded it are uh, uh, Guha and Karthik Bala. Um, and they, again, I was mentioning this before the show, but they brought, you know, Tony Hawks of the DS and the Game Boy Advance. Um, you know, they, these are the guys that founded Vicarious Visions, um, who for a number of years worked on Guitar Hero and things like that. So they've got the, the pedigree to make interesting things and they've done that before. And I think they're showing that pedigree in here being that this is a really unique gaming experience, but it's going to be like Labo. Labo hit big, then they, they kept sort of expanding it and then it just disappeared. We got the mm. VR one, and then it vanished. And I mean, I saw an EB Games website the other day. The um, the car kit for nine ninety five in store only, like ten dollars for the car, the three car options, you know. And I thought that was just crazy that you know, there's something that was a hundred bucks a year ago is now ten dollars. Mm. So that 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 is the other thing that that I question about this is is the longevity of it. Like, will we be buying expansion packs that add in? unique things in the game or will it be no you get your four course markers and then everything else you have to supply yourself yeah and we'd yeah hmm. i don't know I, hmm. I feel like we're like this group of four guys talking about nintendo uh probably isn't <laughs> like the the primary uh um target audience for this um yeah for sure uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not even something that like i'd sort of buy to stick on my shelf like it's it's just you know. Well, the other thing too that 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 I that I worry about is the charging time for the batteries for the cars is supposed to be quite high, and you're only supposed to get like a third of it as playtime. Um, I can't remember the numbers, but well, it was like just, three, three hours or four hours. 
that's pretty normal for RC cars though, right? Like you charge for two days for, and you for get an 10 RC minutes. car, yeah, but for a Nintendo product, Nintendo usually buck that trend and go astronomically long battery for, for minimal. So and that's the mm. other thing too is like how does it connect to the Switch? Because obviously, you know, Switch doesn't have Bluetooth normally. Otherwise we'd have Bluetooth headphones, which is something people want. So I'm curious whether or not this will be just, you know, maybe opening a bit of Pandora's box as well with other accessories or other AR-based functions coming to, to Nintendo products. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, actually, it'd be really interesting to see what the hacks that come out of this will involve. Because, you know, whenever there's some new Nintendo hardware, there is always a huge community of people who hack that thing and yeah. do some really cool stuff. So that'll be interesting. Um, I will say, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm very pleased to know that there's not sort of, like, any sort of online features. Um, and I think that's very much <laughs> by design. Um, because... <laughs> Obviously, online like, Ni- and Nintendo haven't really gone well, and I can only imagine a camera being mixed in there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just exactly. A, like I'm imagining the HD the, camera. I'm imagining that the lag would be so bad that the cars would have to replicate the lag, like it would just start stopping and starting <laughs> as it's driving. The, the, the quality I'm, I'm, is just Game Boy camera quality <laughs> there. Oh boy! All right, let's get into the next announcement: Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. This is what I'm actually kind of excited for. Um, you know, Super Mario 3D World was a great game. Plus, it has its own set of DLC um, or, ex- or a new expansion that's coming to the game that is exclusive to this version. Um, it seems kind of cool. And this one's out on February 12 next year. So it's still a little while off, but, you know, something to look forward to, I guess. Um, I'm keen on this one. This, this is definitely one that I want to purchase myself. Uh, what about you guys? Um, well, I think like the important thing to to, to mention here um, is that it looks as if the game has kind of been remade a little bit. Um, it was something that like people were pointing out on Twitter, um, and I think like Game Explained did like a whole bunch of like comparisons for it. But um, Mario moves like significantly faster um, than in the Wii U original. Um, a lot of the camera angles are just completely different. Um, you know, some of the assets have changed and like there's even like new moves that Mario and and all the other cat people can uh can pull off that weren't in the original. Um and Bowser's Fury looks to be like a lot more open than the original game. Um sort of like more um Mario Odyssey style ish. Um so I, yeah, I'm not really sure like what they've done here, like whether they've just like you know, put a lot of work into porting it over and and making these minute changes, or if they've just like completely rebuilt this game. Um, but I'm absolutely here for it. Like, it's it's one of those games that I didn't really get to play a whole lot of, and, and it does have um full online multiplayer. Um, I was going to say you're forgetting the most important feature is the fact that you can now play the four player co op game online. Mm. Yeah, so you can play through the entirety of the game, um, which is online, standard for every other friends. console in existence, but is a yeah. pleasant surprise when Nintendo announced it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly <laughs> it. Uh, like, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe launched on, on Switch, um, and that didn't have any sort of online capabilities at all, um, which is sort of disappointing because it's a game that sort of is designed to be played with multiple people. Um, and Mario Maker and, had multiplayer online, but it was significantly gimped until people, you know, got into a fury about it, and then they went back and and fixed it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. and then decided that they weren't going to put out any new content for that game. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I'm excited for this. It comes out the day before my birthday, so I know cool. exactly what I'm going to be doing on my birthday. <laughs> and Valentine's Day as well. You got your week sorted there, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about anyone else? Anyone else excited about this one? Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's one of the, I guess it was at the top of the list of which Wii U games to port over to the Switch because... I think I think you mean which, which remaining Wii U yeah, games. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's the, the list. Uh, <laughs> we, we are running low on them, but it was, well, it was one that I wanted to see sooner because I had yeah. bought it later on in the Wii U's, uh, I guess, in the just its lifespan and then it's yeah just just never went back to it especially with the switch and it taking off so well it's well obviously it's going to come to this because now it's the console that everyone's buying it's going to sell on here and so yeah i'm looking forward to that and i don't know if they've shown off any more of bowser's fury besides what's in the teaser i haven't actually looked into it too far but i'm very curious to see what that involves because i'm 
just grown so used to well, if there's an expansion chances are it's like we're, we're tagging an extra hour's worth of gameplay onto this game it might not it might just be a boss rush or it might be remixed levels but usually it's hard to know well should you be getting your hopes up for something or is it going to be they they're really putting their effort into it after all this time you'd hope that it would be something quite new uh, and yeah, the other I thing mean, worth mentioning is that there are two new amiibo coming with it. So this is like the the first non Smash amiibo that we've gotten in quite some time, probably since the uh, the Link's Awakening link, I think. Yeah, um, last point. year. Other yeah. than that, it's only been Smash characters. Um, so yeah, there is a Cat Mario and Cat Peach double pack. Um, I would encourage everybody not to Google Cat Peach amiibo because the <laughs> internet has gone into some real weird and dark places. Um, but uh... I, I will point out, I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed. Those amiibo aren't uh, what, what do uh, Funko call them? Flocked. Yeah, flocked. So yeah. like the, yeah, the I'm, nice texture. I'm a bit, yeah, I'm a bit, you know, let down, disappointed that they're not that, that they're just hard plastic made to look like fur. But you know, I'm when, disappointed. When they're they're not, I'm disappointed they're not actual like taxidermized cats with just Mario heads on them. That would be <laughs> way more worthwhile. Well. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly the the thing that annoys me about this announcement is the fact that they've called it Bowser's Fury and they haven't gone with Meowser. Like, yeah, well, like they, cat they could have gone with Bowser's Fury and that would have worked just as well. Oh, that's a worse wow. research, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah. Bowser's and Fury, you, what? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm all for this one again because you know, it, it, 3D World was one of those games where it was really, really good fun, especially once you had someone playing with you. You had two people, three people, it was great. But it was just so slow, um, and it coming off the the, um, the new Super Mario Brothers U at launch for Wii U, and even 3D Land on the 3DS, they were both very fast paced games. To have this one, it just be so slow. It was so much of a chore to try and play it. So I'm 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 hyped for this one. I, I can't wait to next year for it. Mm. Well, speaking of hype. Let's move into the final announcement of the event, which was Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This is definitely one that we've... This is, this is the worst kept secret of Nintendo the entire year. The three-pack of um, standalone Mario games that were brought together into one bundle um, featuring Super Mario 64, um, Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Sunshine. I think I got some of those mixed up the wrong way around. But yeah, this is one that, that has been speculated on for a very, very long time now. Uh and this is another one that has a timed release, which is very, very odd. So it'll be available from September 18, so that's this Friday coming, through to March 31 next year. That's for both the physical and digital um, releases. But luckily with the um, digital release, uh, if you buy it before that cutoff date, you can then still download it even though it's archived on your system. Does that mean that if you delete it, from your system, you can't download it yeah. anymore. Okay, so I was confused about this too, but like I, <laughs> we did like not not us specifically, but another another outlet, which I cannot remember who it was, did uh, reach out to Nintendo and ask about that. And it's just like if it's on your account, you can re-download it forever. Like you don't have to keep the icon on your screen because it does like say in all of the media, like you know, if it's archived, then you can't yeah. do it. But no, it is like it Weird is wording. if it's on your account. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, Nintendo. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this this one this one has sort of people are expecting it, people are excited, but it's also rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And again, that's going to come back in the conversation we'll have later. So this is the three games, um, pretty much you know, there in all of their glory in their original forms. Now people have compared this to something like the Spyro remaster, for example, which again is three games but completely remastered um, with all new graphics and everything, new engine and things, but um, at a much cheaper price point. Um, whereas these games are just, you know, what what's the price on this one? Eighty bucks at some places, up to like ninety dollars, maybe even. It's a seventy nine ninety five on the eShop. Eighty, 80 right. bucks retail, yeah. Okay, yeah. So so eighty dollars thereabouts, um, depending on where you go, because you know if you go to EB Games, I'll probably jack the prices up higher. Who knows? But um, yeah, eighty dollars for three games, one of which is twenty four years old now. Um, when you've got something like the Spyro Collection or even the the um, Crash Collection, which again have been remastered slightly cheaper than this. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. I've obviously pre-ordered this one myself just because I really like Mario Galaxy. And um, Mario Sunshine is a game that I've started quite a few times but never actually finished. So I'm actually excited to get into this one and finally finish it myself. But how do you guys feel about this? I'm, I'm going to step away from this conversation because I've actually been playing it. So I'm just going to 
step away for the moment. What got um, we not to do? <laughs> <Just go. laughs> so I, I mean, I'm pretty happy about this. Um, as you mentioned, like the the price point is a little bit higher than one would expect for uh, a collection like this. Um, I'm not as upset about you know the the lack of things they've done for Mario 64 as other people are, uh, are because like a lot of people are saying you know you know we've got you know somebody decompiled the game and then you know made it for um uh like a PC port and that has you know widescreen 60 frames a second all of this stuff um which like you know would have been nice sure but like I get the sense, but then, it's, Nin- but then it's not Mario sixty four. Yeah, I mean that's exactly it. And like Nintendo is is out here, you know, trying to celebrate Super Mario Brothers. Um, and I think the way that they've done that is in a very Nintendo way. Um, they've they've presented you know Super Mario sixty four almost exactly as it was, uh, exactly as you remember it. Um, so it's a little bit interesting to see that they haven't followed through with that philosophy on the other two games, which you know do have widescreen support and um you know various well, enhancements here and there sunshine was never widescreen on the gamecube it had the option if you had yeah. the cables but it was not def- by default but now it is yeah. so mm. and what's um, interesting i think about super mario 64 is that they didn't even choose the best version of mario 64 which is the ds version because it had 150 <laughs> stars had four player multiplayer and it had slightly up uh, textures as well granted the the actual um uh, pixel ratio was lower than the 64 version, so it was a little bit, you know, more pixelated. But in terms of gameplay, like it actually had a lot more content in there, you know, plus all the mini games and things like that, which you know probably wouldn't That's be capable true. on the Switch. But, um, I think sort of what they've done here is like again, like it's supposed to be, you know, the game that you played on your Nintendo 64 when you were a kid. Um, yeah. But also they've gone for like the sort of Rumble updated version of the game. Um, so there was a version of the game um, in uh japan that i don't believe ever got a western release um that had um you know added stuff for the rumble pack so it had you know built in in rumble um and i think like that's sort of why we're seeing that particular version of the game um because like there's a lot of like glitch that have been fixed in that for example like one of the ones that the speedrunners have been talking about a lot is the backwards long jump glitch which allows you to basically just backwards long jump your way up a whole bunch of stairs and skip to the final boss basically as soon as you get into it um see i i I always wondered about the i always wondered about the rumble feature or or lack of feature in mario because i remember i specifically remember when i was a kid in australia you know growing up here only i remember seeing an ad here in australia with uh, for the rumble pack back in like 97 or something when the rumble pack was just coming out or whatever and there was an ad where they showed like you know the controller rumbling and stuff and then they had a shot from super mario 64 of mario jumping into a wall and implying that there would be rumble in there and that never came out at all yeah it was well, so that's something like it, it did come out in japan and it's just yeah, not something always, that, that we ever got i always um, wondered if i dreamt that but yeah that makes sense now um so yeah i i think the reason that they've gone with that particular version of the game is so that they don't have to you know add rumble to a game that didn't have rumble previously um but like, and probably, a, probably a middle finger to the speedrunners too <laughs> well yeah um, stop breaking our game but I mean, I, they'll I mean, just find another way the yeah. rest of it looks great like I, i'm much like you i haven't played um you know any more than an hour or so of of super mario sunshine um <gasps> Heathens. But to bring this back to our conversation from last week, where I got on my soapbox and started wailing on about the lack of analog triggers on the ga- uh, on any other system other mm. than the GameCube, the su- uh, Sunshine actually requires the use of analog triggers to use Flood effectively because you pull halfway and you can. Is it wait? How do you do it? You pull yeah, half- halfway does uh, spray. Full down is stop and spray. That's right. Yes, yeah, so you can still run and spray around. So how are they going to do that on the Switch? Obviously, it's going to probably require a second button press or something like that. I mean, I know, but I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that. Yeah. Well, uh, my, like I, I was, I was assuming, and like again, I don't know about this. I haven't talked to anybody, anybody about it. Um, I was assuming that what they do is just use, um, you know, L and ZL, or you know, R and Z. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Have them as, as well. like a full press or a, a half press. Um, yep. but again, you know, until we've played it, or you know, until Luke's allowed to talk about it, basically, <laughs> um, we won't know for sure. Um, yeah yeah paul you've been silent oh sorry go luke no no the the one thing that i will say that people are sort of skipping over is the inclusion of all the music so the mario 64 soundtracks in there the the super mario sunshine soundtrack which i think is a phenomenal soundtrack and then the galaxy soundtrack 
And um, Galaxy there's, 100, is there's 170 plus songs from the three games on on this in this collection. So, um, and it has that Smash Brothers music mode thing where you just press like the minus button and the screen turns off because everyone loves a oversized underpowered iPod in their pocket. <laughs> um, but yeah, the inclusion of that I think is is something that people really need to pay more attention to because some of the music in these games is just amazing. Yeah, Paul, you've been quiet on this one so far. What, what are you feeling about this? Hey, um. I too am disappointed there's not some of the the DS elements included in the game, most notably that there's no Wario in <laughs> pull back in a Mario 64. In fact, all of those games should have Wario added because he's been notably absent for for way too long in some of those games. But, I thought you were going to say it's missing that little 3D thumb touchpad stick. Thing oh, God, like, oh, yeah, it is. It's a, oh god! I do not miss that thumbnail. Thumb thing. <laughs> that's the, that's the song that the Ewoks sing at the end of Jedi, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, so it would be nice at least. I at least enjoyed that part. I know that people that would probably prefer the sixty four version over the DS version had had issues with how the DS. Ran, the DS version ran, but it's yes. I really enjoyed how it did include those other characters. It did change up the game, so I can understand why they might want it closer to the classic Mario sixty four. And I'm glad that people, more people, are going to be subjected to Mario Sunshine. That's a game I spent a lot of time with on the GameCube, and it was very much. Uh, it was a love hate relationship with that game where it's i don't know the the setting there's so much that like it was just such a happy sort of game it's a like it says set in as i guess a, the the tropical setting is something that was a nice change of pace but then there's just so many elements that i guess cleaning up the graffiti just a, a lot of elements of flood and the i guess those challenge levels as well were mm. were, were a bit unpleasant like i'm hoping that's something that it's like i was younger then i wasn't as used to those games as i i haven't got like now i've got 15 or however many years on top of that game so it's I'm hoping that I it's just on oh no, well, I'm just naturally going to have a easier time with it but it's also just hopefully they've made changes with it so it's more enjoyable for anyone who wants to jump into that game because it's got of course the the usual 3D platformer camera issues all through mm. it and mm. yeah it'll be nice to play Galaxy again it's, it's or or at least be able to finish it because I didn't have my Wii set up at the time. I've probably played more of Galaxy 2, if anything. Yeah. The, 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 so something that they, the Nintendo Japan put out on one of the Twitters, I think it was the Mario Twitter, was that the GameCube controller is not supported in yeah. Sunshine, which is just weird um, because, as as you said, Angela, like, it, you know, it made use of those, those triggers, the, the shoulder buttons on the GameCube controller. And we we support it. I mean, you can play Mario Tennis with the GameCube controller, mm. um, and I think I think even Burnout Paradise supports it too. And like Smash, right? Know. Smash, yeah, yeah, obviously Smash supports yeah, yeah. it. But there's there's some games that you know you wouldn't expect it to be supported, and it is. So for a game that was that made a big deal of the GameCube controller from the GameCube era, not supporting it now, even though the system supports it, is just weird. Hmm. I just want to point out, like, sort of on the note of Super Mario Galaxy Two, is that it is absent from this collection. Um, yep. in, in my opinion, that's sort of understandable. Um, there's a lot of stuff that kind of requires fine pointing, um, particularly sort of, uh, Yoshi levels. Um, it, th- there's just no way that I could have seen them, you know, adapting that to, uh, um, to a controller. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit disappointing that like Galaxy 2 is absent here because it is an excellent game. Um, but it's just it would have been difficult to do um yeah yeah and sort of the other thing worth mentioning which you sort of touched on before is that it is a limited 
limited purchase. So I, 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 I don't know how I feel about this. Like, it's dumb, <laughs> um, but like I kind of get like get the feeling that like it's only going to be limited as the collection. Like a lot of other people have speculated that they're going to like split the games up and sell them separately on the eShop, and I think that's probably likely. But like I don't understand why you wouldn't just continue selling the the collection. Like it just seems like a really bizarre, nonsensical choice to me. Here's, here's my theory, ma- Ollie, because they're going to finally bring back Virtual Console. Yes, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I blew it out of the water. That's yeah. what they're going to do. Well, I mean, speaking of that, uh, the next announcement, you said you Actually, called yeah. this the final announcement, but yeah, it's certainly on. not. <laughs> and Super Mario All-Stars is also coming to the SNES Online Switch app. Anyway, whatever. It's, it's, it's a 30-year-old game that, that also got its time in the sun 10 years ago for the 25th anniversary where it got re-released on a separate disc that again cost like 60 bucks just for, just for a and SNES ROM. I, th- I, think, I think we need to point out too that Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo was the first ever remake. That's true. It was. It there, was. There'd been ports of games from system to system, and they were obviously different because systems were, you know, very different back in the 80s. But this was the first time we ever got the same games brought to a new platform, new generation, with redone assets. So, thanks, Nintendo. You started the trend. <laughs> but that's also freely available uh, as part of an update on the SNES Online Switch app. So, get in there and play it. Um, let's just quickly smash through this next announcement. So we've got Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which was a huge surprise to pretty much everyone, I think. There wasn't any really any leaks that I was aware no. of about this one. Um, so it's a new um, Warriors or Musou game, if you're a fan of that series uh, by Koei Tecmo and Nintendo. This one is set 100 years before the events of Breath of the Wild. So it will see through the events of the Great Calamity with the same over-the-top gameplay or similar game, over-the-top gameplay fair people would expect from the Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors games, and it comes out on November 20. So I wasn't originally excited by this one. I was kind of like, eh, whatever, it's just, you know, that Dynasty Warriors series I never really played. But I recently actually started playing uh, Hyrule Warriors just a few days ago because I had it, but I'd never actually played it. And um, I'm actually kind of keen on this one, and I'll, I'll touch up on that later on, um, maybe if we have some time. But yeah, this one seems kind of cool. Uh, set before Breath of the Wild, kind of fills up that story a little bit. We got little snippets of what was going on in Breath of the Wild, but we didn't really get to see, you know, what actually happened and really the scale of everything that happened. But yeah, I don't know. How do you guys feel about this? I'm, um, I'm all for it, but I'm also all against it because it's a <laughs> Musou game, and I cannot stand Musou games. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um. So yeah, I'm like I'm pretty keen for this. Um, I I'm a bit of an outlier when it comes to Zelda games because I do not really like Breath of the Wild all that much. Um, <laughs> which you know, again, heathen. Get a load of this. Yeah, guy. I, mean, I I I have a, a long history of of coming on this podcast and and spouting real bad opinions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I, I didn't like Breath of the Wild all that much. I thought, you know, the gameplay was decent. Um, it wasn't anything new. Um, but like the thing that sort of frustrated me the most about Breath of the Wild is that like the story that it tells is the story of a game that I'd rather be playing. Um, so, you know, it's all told through these flashbacks. And like, I think that, you know, the original, you know, gathering of the four champions and, and you know, the calamity that happened is a much more interesting story than like, you know, everyone's dead now get to the castle um so like i'm super excited to like sort of see how this story stuff unfolds um and while you're right that there weren't any leaks um there kind of was in a way um so i sort of tweeted about this the other day um but basically uh earlier in the year there was um a whole bunch of the the spanish voice actors in breath of the wild um were in a podcast basically saying like joking around about you know how they'd finish their recording for the next game um and then like you know they backtracked on it and said that you know we were just joking about like embargoes in general and we weren't talking about any specific game but as it turns out there is another breath of the wild game that they would have voice acted in um right so So it was a tiny leak (laughs) tiny tiny leak a little Um, splash on the people thought it was related to breath of the wild 2 but um yeah i mean like this is going to be running in the same engine as um persona 5 scramble um which was a fantastic game and very well optimized on switch i think one of the main complaints about uh the original hyrule warriors and fire emblem warriors was that they sort of had a few performance issues on switch um but uh persona 5 scramble was as absolutely flawless at a locked 30 frames a second which isn't ideal like you'd want 60 instead but 30 is 
more than serviceable. Especially um, if it's locked at 30, not, yeah. you know, occasionally hits 30. Mm. Um, so I, I'm pretty excited for it. Like, I wasn't super big on Warriors games until I had to play <laughs> One Piece Pirate Warriors mm-hmm. for review. And then, like, suddenly it just all clicked. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited to give it a go. Yeah, my only issue with this is that we know how the story ends. You know, yeah. that, that Link fails, that the champions fall. That's the problem I have with prequels when we know where the story is going because now they're going to have to throw in moments of, of suspense and build up to try and keep people interested in the story. And it was always the same, like, in Smallville, whenever, you know, Clark Kent, you know, he lost his powers or, you know, it's like, they, they, you know, Cliff Hay at the end of the season, you know, will he survive? It's like, yes, he's Superman. He's going to be fine. He's the main character of your show based on the character. <laughs> So every time there's a, a prequel to something, it always runs that risk of, well, we know how it's going to end. Now we just need to know how it gets to that point. And I'm keen for that because, as I, as Ollie said, this is one of those stories that I'd, I really want to know. I want to know how, how you know, when do they find the Guardians? How do they activate the Guardians? When do the Guardians turn? You know, things like that. And I'm keen for it. But at the same time, it's like it's it's buried under a Musa game and Musa games, you either like them or you don't. And I just don't like, I had to review three of them back to back once three, three <laughs> different themed Musa games. And it just, it broke me. I can't, I cannot play Musa games anymore because they're, they're just, it doesn't matter what the theme is. There's the, the combat is pretty much the same across the board for me. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't mind that. Um, we already know like how the story sort of ends and things like that, because knowing that the, like, you know, the, a, a, pretty much most of the cast dies somewhat or something like that anyways it's kind of more exciting for me because then it sh- i think it does sort of add that extra bit of tension because you know it's going to happen and then you're kind of just waiting for it ha- to happen and you're just excited to see how it's going to happen so i think knowing that they're going to die is, is going to probably add a little more impact rather than just like oh my god i like this character so much and they died that's horrible it's like oh well, we know these characters are going to die and now we actually see that through and we have to go through the story knowing that that's going to happen I'm kind of excited to do something like that. And this, and Hyrule Warriors, the original, is my first ever Musou game. And I only just started playing it a few days ago. And I'm actually kind of liking it so far because I don't have to think about it. Like I can play it in bed and it's my sleepy time, you know, game where I'm not playing a JRPG and then I go to back to play it and I forget what I've been doing for the last 20 minutes. Like I'm just yeah. mashing, the button, mashing the buttons and just getting through points and then I can just go to sleep. So I actually quite like that element of it. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of keen. What about you, Paul? Uh, I just want to note that Angelo's really keen to see all of your favorite Zelda characters die. <laughs> that, that was something you were quite enthusiastic about. And, yeah, man. But, Link, but, Zelda, those damn Gorons, get him out of here. Yeah, they just all buy the dust. It's, <laughs> yep. uh, bring Is it that on. a rock joke? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am excited for Hyrule Warriors. It, so I bought the original ones on each platform, despite the fact I had it on the Wii U. I didn't need it on the 3DS, and I definitely then didn't need it on the Switch. But every time they sort of brought more of the DLC, well, they added more DLC. It was that horrible sort of like, like we we get put in enough extra in to tempt you over if you really want to play more of this game, and. But- I'm hoping that Age of Calamity doesn't go into that. They might go into the full season pass. The Fire Emblem Warriors had it. Of course, Hyrule Warriors had at least two different versions of that, Uh, all the weird cross-purchasing or separate purchasing for the 3DS and the Wii U version. Because I guess this is telling a very specific story, so it's less likely there's going to be all those crossover characters. That's the thing, like, who can you add to that story and have it make sense? Because, like, we already know exactly who was there. We already know exactly sort of what uh, happened to them. Tingle? <laughs> yeah, or, or Linkle. It's, uh, as, uh, I guess I don't really want to see how Tingle and Linkle will also wind up dying in this uh, Breath of the Wild <laughs> universe. Hang on, Those hang names on, hang sound on. so if, stupid next to each other, Tingle and Linkle. If we're talking about... If we're talking about Tingle dying, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that want to see how that plays out. <laughs> <laughs> but he does cool the most... Limpars right out of here. <laughs> but the, the, the big thing that, that came out of this is that... Um, I can't even think of his name now. <sighs> the guy that, that led off the announcement, the Zelda guy. I can't think of his name. Um, AGA Anuma. That's him. But he did mention that, you know, we'll get more information on Breath of the Wild 2, and it is set in the same world. 
Yeah. So this is yeah, it's a canon. It's canon prequel yeah. to it. So yeah. No, no, not this one. He's talking about the sequel. Oh, so, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. More about that. Um, another thing too is that that this is the same team that did um, Horror Warriors, but it's also the same team, uh, the same leadership team that did Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three: The Black Order. So that's it's interesting to see, you know, when when they started this because Black Order came out what last August. Um, so you know, it's maybe fourteen months between that one and this one. So it'd be interesting to see how it all comes together in the in the, in the end of in the end of it all. So what you're saying is that we're getting Spider-Man DLC. <laughs> yeah. It's going to make that same joke. Well, at the moment, everything's Black Panther because Spider-Man is exclusive to PlayStation. Oh, of course. That's yes, that's yeah. right. Yep. All right. Let's get into our featured topic. We're in an, so to our listeners, in an effort to restructure the show a little bit and try to do away with news, we've instead spent 45 minutes talking about news. So, <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into our featured topic, though. So this is a question that I want to bring up to everyone, looking at the spe- more specifically the, the Mario announcements that came uh, uh, last week. Um, I want to throw the question out there. Do we expect any more announcements out of Nintendo, not including third party or partner announcements? So this is specifically stuff coming out of Nintendo for the rest of 2020. The points that I want to make about this one is that the big Switch games that we have to be released for the remainder of this year are 3D Mario All-Stars, which comes out this week. We've got Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which comes out in October, on October 30, sorry. We've got Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers, which kind of counts, I guess, as a new piece of hardware, um, which is coming out on November 30. And then Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which is November 30th. So the big sort of holiday game, really, that's coming out in that holiday period uh, is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. That's kind of what, as far as we know, that's what we're kind of resting on there. And that's coming out... Presumably, like with the Xbox announcements coming out and, you know, uh, PS4, PS5, sorry, looking to make theirs later on this week. Um, presumably, that game will be going up against, you know, next gen consoles, depending on how you want to look at it. It's going up against them. It's not going up against them, whatever. But that's kind of like Nintendo's big tent pole game that they were relying on so far, as far as we know. But what. Do, uh, so, yeah, going back to that question, do you guys think that there'll be any more coming out that will sort of hold Nintendo up against those other two consoles over the Christmas period, the most important shopping season of the year? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, I think basically what we're going to see here is probably a whole bunch of reprints of Super Mario 3D All-Stars throughout the, the holiday period um, because, you know, Mario sells. Um, so, you know, they're basically just like, I would I would guess relying on the fact that you know Mario 64 is going to be on the shelves this holiday season. And um, and the new Mario Kart is in there as well. Yeah. Um so that is yeah October 13. Um Yeah, I wasn't sure if that really counted. Yeah, it's a little bit it's like Ma- sort of fringe. <laughs> um, but it's it's Mario Kart. Mario Kart gains attention. But yeah, I, I mean like I think we could see more announcements. Um we're sort of like beyond the point where we can expect to see any retail announcements. Um, but like, you know, Nintendo does do digital games. Um, and good I job. think it, yeah, like good job. And, um, the stretches is the other one, um, snipper clips. So I think we could see, um, something like that happen. Um, but I, I just, I can't expect that we're going to, to get any first party games. Honestly, at this point, I'm not even expecting that we'll get any third party games um, mm. announced for this year either because like you know doom eternal has been missing an action on switch for you know six months now um do we have and... a fifa and or just dance coming uh, fifa we... 21 legacy editions are coming yeah so yeah. the same as last year's just an updated roster and just dance 21 is coming november 13th or something as well yeah, and they they sell well enough, I guess, on the Switch, but they're not really system sellers. They're not things to remind people, ah, yes, Nintendo is here to stay kind of thing. I mean, I think, like, uh, probably what Nintendo is banking on, perhaps a little more strongly, um, is the fact that they've just announced a uh, a Fortnite console. Um, and given that there's 116 million iOS players who can now no longer play Fortnite portably... Um, I mean, it's probably not a bad idea to have a portable console with Fortnite slapped across the box. Because, like, let's face it, there's only going to be one console on the shelves this holiday period with Fortnite slapped across the box, and that's the Switch. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't expect to see anything sort of big announced. Um, 
it's probably just not worth trying to vie for airspace when the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, which is the dumbest name ever, um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so pumping out news so so often. Um, I don't know. It's 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 a little hard to say, but I, I wouldn't expect to see any big um, big announcements coming anytime soon. I'll I'll go the opposite to you, there, Ali. Based on Nintendo's track record this year of sort of doing announcements and then two months later the game sort of being out. If if they do anything, I expect we'd see something end of September, early October for like that sort of first, second week of December because they seem to have done a fair bit there with like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Smash Brothers. Um, so maybe we see something pop up in that first week of December, but if we don't hear anything by the middle of October, then no, there's nothing else coming this year. Yeah, we but still... I, I'm, I'm, Fingers crossed on something. We still have a new Smash character to come, don't we? Because we've only had one out of the second DLC pack. We do, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we've we've got six characters total to to sort of come out by mm. the end of next year. So uh, I would be very surprised if we didn't get one. Um, the other thing is that the second Pokemon DLC is still on the way and it's still going to come out this year. Yeah, do do we know if, if like that DLC, the first set of DLC, even moved any units for that? Because I feel like that anyone who's getting Pokemon has already got it. Um, I mean, it it sort of kept the momentum of the game. Um, like it didn't lead to like a massive increase in sales, but usually we'd be seeing like a pretty significant drop off. Um, but I think that will change because I have a very strong feeling that like with this um, once the second DLC is out, we'll see retail editions for you know Pokemon Sword and Shield Complete Edition that you know has the, all the DLC on cart. Um, for the same price, um, so I think that could be something good to have on shelves because, like as we know, like Pokemon mm. always sells well. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just like it, it is coming. Um, whether or not that'll actually turn into any, you know, <laughs> worthwhile sales is another story altogether. But like Nintendo has increased their manufacturing capacity for Nintendo Switch consoles by five million. Um, so they were aiming for 25 million sold in this financial year, and they've bumped that mm. up to 30 million. Um, so they obviously expect to uh, to move a lot of consoles over the holiday period. Um, whether it's an inter- do that interesting on, move. It's a very yeah, interesting move. Definitely. Um, whether they'll do that on you know Mario and Hyrule Warriors alone is questionable. I don't think they would be able to, um, but it's very possible as well that we could see something in um sort of january february march um yeah we'll just have to wait and see because nintendo is clearly very confident about their ability to sell five more consoles than they expected yeah we've also got um of course we'd also have an animal crossing probably christmas event as well becoming so well i was just thinking too maybe in march we'll see an animal crossing one year anniversary edition which comes with all the updates and all that stuff on the cart Mm. what about you paul you've been quiet yeah um I don't see lots coming out from Nintendo. It's uh, I was also thinking about the Pokemon DLC and its power to be able to help move that because there would, of course, be people that were, well, initially waiting for whatever a third edition would be to to come out. And now that that's tied behind DLC and... It's yeah. If they have a complete pack, there would definitely be that to get those people on board, because mm. there'd be people that were still holding out after the the DLC because they want it on a physical cartridge. And it's like I don't mind the the, the number of stuff still coming out. Like if you want big Nintendo games, and I guess like we still do want something exciting out by the end of the year, a big game, it's we're not getting a Breath of the Wild 2. We are still getting a Breath of the Wild game, which is great. There's not, I guess, like no sign of Metroid and Metroid Prime 4 is going to be some way away. In fact, it, it wouldn't surprise me if for the rest of the year, it's going to be a continuation of hearing more about things being pushed back into 2021 which is like it it wouldn't surprise me if it happens more across the xbox and ps5 as well it's like next year is going to be very (laughs) it's going to be loaded with a lot of games but 
I've also got a back catalogue of games, and there's also just smaller games coming out, like Cookserve Delicious 3. There's the uh, Rebel... Is it Rebel Galaxy? I always get the variation yeah, of Rebel like Galaxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's outlaw coming out there like they're, they're smaller games and like look, every week there's small like well there's still big games but they're not like yeah first party or anything games that are coming out so there's going to be games there but if it's you only really want the first party stuff you you're probably going to wind up a bit disappointed unless they have something yeah really big they're holding on to Nintendo still continuing to go to the beat of their own drum as opposed to following all the the same can well they do announcements like Sony and Microsoft have been doing but they've got the tendency to just drop them on, on surprise so it's yeah, anything could happen, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm still happy enough with what they're like. I've still got more than enough stuff to get through. Kind of feel like Nintendo beating to the beat of their own drum is sort of more Nintendo hitting a trumpet with drumsticks and pretending that that's an actual instrument. A drum. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the trumpet. <laughs> but I, I think at this point too, Nintendo's had three big years in a row. At, at the end of the year, you know, we had, we had Mario Galaxy, not Mario Galaxy, Mario Odyssey, you know, Smash Brothers, Pokemon was last year. Um, and as much as I hate to say it, development is cyclical. We always seem to have a year where there's, you know, there's always a, a less in terms of qual- quality or quantity of games. You know, we had we had Animal Crossing at the start of this year, but that was also delayed out of last year. So um, I think this year, I don't think we're going to see anything special from them because I think it's more... You know, this is their off year, if you will, especially with with COVID doing some damage. Um, so I think we're just going to see the dregs of things, and then next year they'll come back with more stuff. Mm. Well, to put the releases that we have coming up this year into perspective, and by perspective, I mean my perspective, um, the only original Nintendo game really that we've got coming out for the end of this year um, is Hyrule Warriors uh, Age of Calamity. Everything else is a re-release of some sort. So the Super Mario 3D All-Stars are three re-releases with no remastering really whatsoever in them. Um, Pikmin, 3 Delu- uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is a Wii U re-release with some new content. So there is some new stuff coming to that. And then we've got Game & Watch, uh, Super Mario Brothers, which is yet another Super Mario Brothers release that you don't get to buy for $5 this time. You have to buy for $80. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate, um, Hyrule Warriors is the only real original Nintendo game that is coming out at the end of this year, um, to sort of lead their, their holiday sales. So again, it's an interesting move, especially when they can, they're gearing up for, as Ollie said, 30 million units to move, uh, at the end of the year, which I'm going to guess they're banking on Animal Crossing to help move those units over the period. Yeah. I mean, we might see something too in January. Like they, they've they've had a bit of a run with January games as well, and so January, February, March is usually you know a trifecta of games there. So maybe the you know what plans they had for November have just been pushed back to next year. Mm. It's also and notable then, that like we haven't sorry. seen a Kirby game this year, um, and Kirby games are pretty much a yearly thing. So <sighs> you just jinxed it now. They're going to announce one this week. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> like Kirby Direct, yeah, Year of Kirby. Oh gosh! Well, it, next year is the year of Zelda, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's fifth anniversary. One of the other things, I guess, with leading up to the end of the year, especially in regards to everything COVID, it's we're also facing recessions worldwide. It's going to be, I guess, we'll find out next year if everyone's going to be selling as many consoles as they're keen on. Like they're, they're like living in Melbourne, we have, are, of course, still in lockdown. So it's the consoles are going to sell because people need something to do at home. But at the same time, we're on the verge of people having their, like, yeah, any benefits cut down a little bit. Uh, it's like, yeah, uh, mass unemployment. So it's, I guess, not a very much a sort of, Game, gamer thing to talk about it's just more that it's it, it 
at at the same time, it's probably also not the worst thing if there there is less stuff out there ever <laughs> to to tempt people because it's yeah just. Well, the other thing too, I suppose, is that the switch is now going. It's now officially on sale in Brazil, or going to be in in a couple of weeks. Um, which it hasn't hadn't been available there, you know, officially. People could import it, but it wasn't on sale locally. Uh, and now that is the case. And Brazil is a big market for video games. Uh, it is an expensive market for video games, but it is a big market. So maybe that's where Nintendo is expecting these extra, you know, millions of consoles to go. Is maybe they're expecting a big thing in Latin America. So yeah, that's a good point. Or China, the China deal. You know, it sort of it sort of launched late last year, early this year, with a bit of a whimper. Mm. So maybe they're expecting that to pick up steam with, you know, the 3D All Stars collection or, or Mario Kart Home Circuit or something like that. And uh, Ring Fit Adventure, mm. which is coming out in China next week. Um, so that game is selling more and more <laughs> as the year goes on. It just it's a game <laughs> it just that has the longest quit. tail. It, eventually, yeah. it will be the best selling game of all time in two, <laughs> two or so years. I, I like I like that it will not quit. It's like that's a good good tagline for an exercise game. <laughs> just yeah. will not quit. Pretty good indicative. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, guys, I know we've got our games we're playing segment here but looking at it my goodness we have so many games to run through so i'm actually suggesting that maybe on the fly we'll leave this one out for this week how do you guys feel about that that's probably a good idea we're already running at an hour yeah in that case let's move into fortnight forecast so between now and the next episode so today's date being the 13th of september next episode being around about the 27th um notable releases we have coming are september 15 we have fight crab which I'm not entirely familiar with. I've seen little things about it. This is the one where it's basically just giant crabs in like a city landscape beating the snot out of each other, right? Yeah, with knives. Yeah, with, with it, knives. It's great. With knives. Awesome. Uh, September 18, we've got Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which we've been talking about, plus WWE 2K Battlegrounds. And then September 24, we have Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition. Um, yeah, anyone want to add anything to those? Uh, just that WWE 2K is the... Only game, only WWE game this year. They've cancelled the mainline one. So mm. if you want wrestling, this is your only option this year. Um, I will say as well that on September 17th, there is, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Super Punch Patrol, which is made by the person who made Gunman Clive, um, which is uh, coming out on the 17th, as I said. Um, and we'll have a review for that as well, because it's quite a good game. Cool. All right, well, that about wraps up this week's VOOCcast. Be sure to head to the site, www.vooks.net, for all your Nintendo news, reviews, and everything in between. To keep up to date, follow us, uh, follow the site on Twitter, at vooks.net, all spelled out. Uh, Oli, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at chocobalt, C-H-O-C-O-B-A-L-T, but you can also find me in the Vooks Discord, where we now have a VOOCcast dedicated channel, um, which is bit.ly forward slash Vooks Discord. And what about you, Luke? Luke where, can you, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on uh, all the socials at Renderman7. And Paul? You can find me on Twitter at Captain Paul Blues, C A P T Paul Blues, on Twitter, or I'm just floating around the Discord as Blues. So, yeah, it's, I'm easy to find. I thought cool. you were just going to say floating around the sky or something. Then I was going to be like, <laughs> I know Melbourne's a bit of a weird place right now. But that's just yeah. taken I, I'm just for forever scanning in case people need my help. <laughs> Stay home, <laughs> damn it. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Mangello. That's M-A-N-J-E-L-L-0. And uh, over at Twitch at Mangello Show with no zeros in that one. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next fortnight. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.